Okay, hello friends, welcome back to getting yourself organized with org mode, my little screencast about org mode functions and concepts. It's been a while since the last video, but sorry, it's summer here and I have a lot of work to do in the garden, but today you are lucky, it's raining, so no gardening work for me, but screencasting work. Today we will have a look at dynamic blocks. Dynamic blocks is a nice concept because it helps you to create a dynamic content inside your org file by calling a function that is creating that content and a dynamic block usually starts with a line that reads the hash tag and then plus begin colon and then a name of the dynamic block this name is the name of the function that you call, but don't be afraid, you don't have to code functions in ELIS because there are some predefined functions available, we will see them later. A uh, dynamic block can have parameters. Parameters start with a colon and a parameter name and after that there is a value and at the end of a dynamic block there is a line that reads uh, hashtag uh, plus end colon, that's your dynamic block, and we have some predefined functions available. One of them is clock table and the other one is column view. The clock table you can build a timer counting table and with column view you can capture column views inside a document. So let's have a look at the clock table. You remember episode 4 of our podcast? when we talked about uh, clocking time, clock in, clock out, we had this org mode tutorial episode 4. Let's go here and you see every task has a clocking information. So when we put ourselves on the top level and we say control C X D, we get the clocking information here, but that's uh, something you can't export, something you can't print. So, for creating a dynamic block with a clocking table, all you have to do is put yourself on a headline and then you press Ctrl C, Ctrl X and Ctrl R. So we will do it, Ctrl C, X and R. And now you have a clock table that reads, this is the dynamic block, it says begin. Clock table is the function. We are going to a max level that is that currently it's two. That means the headline and that one org mode tutorial. This is my max level, but I have a bit more of levels, so I can change this to four. You press Control C C or Control C X uh, Control U. Okay, C C. And now you see my clock table looks quite different. I see the total time of the top level, then the total time of the next level, then it's going down each level, so you see how the time sums up. I have a really nice clocking table. And this is just fine. And you also see a caption line that says clock summary of today. Today is August 29 and I have now a clock summary over this subtree because my scope is subtree. We can leave that scope here and we can add some more parameters. One parameter could be block. I say block this month press Ctrl C twice. So you see, for this month I have a clock summary created now for August 2016 and this project that I am clocking here was uh, done end of June and beginning of July, so there is no uh, timestamps for August, but now you can use shift right or shift left to go through the months, because you said block is this month, now if I press shift and cursor left, uh, cursor left, you see I am at this month minus one, that was July, and in July 
I was working on uh, snippet 5 and the blog article and if I go back to June one month less you see those are the records for June you can also this is also nice at a parameter that says step we add a step for the week and now let's update this and you see the week that started at beginning of June has no entries for this subtree the same for the next week and so on and the week that started on Monday the 20th of June we have those clocking information and on Monday 27th of June until July we have this so when we move forward let me see now you have to be on the begin line to move forward and back you see then I am on the July 1st timeline I am here with those things I can move back and so on so you have the possibility to create a very nice timesheet. You can also say, okay, I don't want to make blocks. Let's do some time to start. If you do that, you have to use double quotes and then you press uh, exactly control C dot so that you select the date. Let's select the 20th of June as a starting date and we do a ending date the end C point and we end up at July 15 so CC and now you see again the clocking report for this time frame between Monday 20th of June and the end date was July 15 so you see you can dynamically create a lot of clocking information so if you have a project that you work for a client you can really easily uh, sum up this thing and export it for the uh, client and say look this is what I have done for you if your boss wants a weekly or monthly timesheet this is the way of course you have to clock every task inside org mode but this is how it goes there's also another nice option if you go back you can change the scope now I am at subtree I could also say the scope is the whole file or even the file with archive so even when you have clocked your work and you have moved this finished task to your archive file for the clocking table the archive file will be searched as well and you will get all the clocking information for all files that are searched so practically if you are really disciplined and you say every task I do with org mode I clock it uh, at the end of the month or at the end of the year you can create a nice timesheet where you really see how much time you spend on which task so that was clocking you remember clocking is, is one thing the other thing I, I frequently got questions uh, from the people that watch the screencast they say yeah oh, column view is a very nice thing but how can I export it or print it and then you look in the org manual and uh, say since column view is just an overlay of a buffer it cannot be exported or printed directly that's the bad news the good news is column view can be captured you remember our small book list where we defined a columns property and if I change the column view, you know, control C, X, C, control C, control X, control C. I'm here at the book list. I see my someday David Allen and so on. This is what I would like to export, but I can't export this IMAX overlay in the buffer. So let's quit that. But I want to have a book list. One easy way to do that is now remember the hack that we did the other day when we were talking about uh, external links and IDs I have still my F5 key assigned to copy the ID property here to my clipboard so let's do that you see this ID is now in my clipboard and now I open a new file XF the file will be called 
book list org. Yeah, here we go. It's an empty file. And now I want to get a dynamic block that captures column view. All I have to do is to press Ctrl C, Ctrl X and I. Ctrl C, Ctrl X and I. Now you see down here we get a question. What do you want? What columns do you want to capture local? That means the local uh, subtree or global, the whole file. All headings in the file or you can use a path to a file that uses the whole file. Or in this case I said okay I just copied the ID of my book list to the clipboard and now I passed it here. That means control uh, Y. It's here. And now you see problem solved. I have the dynamic block that says begin column view. Horizontal lines is one. That means I create this horizontal line. And now we can extend it a bit. So you see I have my to do. You see also that here you get the full size of the columns. It's not limited to uh, the column wife that you defined in the other file. If, if we change to the other buffer, my live org, and we put uh, column view here, CXC, you see this is abbreviated because uh, I only have a column wife of 30 characters for the books column. But in my capture, I get everything. So now I have a nice table that holds exactly what my column view is showing. And this file I can save, I can update, I can export to HTML or to a PDF or whatever. And that's what the people want to do. So this is it for dynamic blocks. I hope you enjoyed it. You see it's not that difficult. You don't have to learn Elisp and uh, Emacs programming because uh, the very useful functions are already there. You just have to find them. So thanks for watching and thanks for all the comments. And we still have one snippet to go for episode 6. And then I have some stuff uh, for the next episode and then I'm running out of stuff. So. If you have ideas what other features, uh, features of, of org mode you want to get explained, let me know. At, at the moment I have still six uh, small videos in my buffer and then really I'm running out of ideas. But I guess then we already have covered everything what's uh, useful about org mode. So see you next time. You know, I'll be back.